Hey y'all, so let me explain to y'all how serious God is about music, okay? First of all, there are levels in heaven, and God is at the highest heaven, okay? And I know a lot of times, like, people like to be like, oh yeah, like, Satan was, um, the worship, what, what is it? Like, they say, like, he was in charge of the music, okay? And I've heard, like, some pastors even say, like, like the worship um leader in a sense right um but when i was reading the bible i was like it never says anything like about satan singing although that i did see it was like in ezekiel like how god talks about um how he made uh satan and made him out of music and made him out of like stones and god just talks about him in such a loving way that when i read it i was mind blown of how sweet, man, God is, like, how kind his heart is, like, because even though Satan, like, betrayed him in a sense, was, like, the Judah, right, to Jesus, it's, like, God still talks so highly, like, of, like, how I created you with the most, like, precious stones and just all these things, like, and he basically made him out of, like, instruments in a sense. And, you know, when I was thinking, I was like, yeah, I don't believe Satan was, you know, in charge of music or even a singer at that, you know. Because then why would God summon him to talk to him ever, right? And then it made me think, like not just in the summoning, but God specifically created angels to sing to him day and night, singing holy, holy, holy. Like, he actually has angels who sing to him day and night, holy, holy, holy. And I'm like, God created everything in heaven. Why would Satan be like the worship leader or like in charge of the music when God specifically created angels who sing to him like how can an angel teach other angels how to sing a song that God like when God created the angel to sing it's not like you know God in heaven is like oh take vocal lessons I need your voice like this like he gave everybody and created everybody for the position that they would hold in his kingdom, right? And so, I say all that to say how precious and important artists are to God. And why Satan would want to steal, right, what God had created for himself as a form of worship to use here on the earth as a form to worship him, Satan I'm, I'm speaking of and so God created all people right gave all people purpose and not just per like people everything has purpose the rocks have a purpose the bees have a purpose the flowers have the purpose right the water has a purpose the sky has a purpose clouds have a purpose the sun has everything he made has purpose and so I'm specifically talking about musicians and artists and so in all of this right because it is what God used you know how he created music to be able to be used into worshiping him or as a form of worshiping him Satan comes here on earth and wants to snatch up all these artists to serve him and if we're being very very realistic the music industry is definitely demonic definitely demonic it is so 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 demonic that if you are a child of god you do not want to enter the industry unless he sent you because wherever god sends you he covers you he protects you Whatever he designed and called you to be, he will protect you as long as you are in his will and continuing to serve him. The moment that you decide to give your gift that God has gave you to the enemy, now you are no longer in protection 
and under God's covering. You've exposed yourself to the enemy. And if you watched my video, Can You Sell Your Soul? In there, I talk about how you can sell your soul. And I advise you guys to go watch that if you're like, How? Ezekiel says, yeah, God laid everything out using that verse. So go ahead and do yourself your due diligence. And go watch what the word of the Lord, you know, is in that video and what he said but now back to this video you can sell your soul to the enemy and the thing is when you give him access because like i've said in a video before like our bodies are temples right we are a house where spirits can come in and live satan can live in people you know and evil spirits can live in people just as the holy spirit can live in god's people we choose what spirit it is that we want to live in us what spirit we want to bow down to right because one of them is going to be in control and so it's which spirit are you giving your power to to do what they want to do through and with your life and so when God gives us these gifts he gives us the will to choose who it is we will give these gifts to who it is we will glorify these gifts with who it is that we will allow to use our gifts to worship either God or the enemy and so when it comes to the music industry you have to child of God if you are going in there you better hold on to the Lord not looking to the left not looking to the right but focusing on the Lord because he can cover you in dark places right the Bible says like you do not light up a candle and put it under the table no you put it on top of the table so it can light up the house so that everybody can see right and children of god we go into dark places why because the dark needs the light light with light it's it's not doing anything it's not advancing his kingdom it's not saving souls but light in a dark place glorifies god because god is the light and so back to like the music industry and music you know what you sing about like it's a spirit that is influencing your songs and if you ever notice like I remember one time right I was like and this was years ago this is when Beyonce's um album I think it's four I don't think it's called year of the four I think it's just called four and I remember y'all like I was not in a relationship I don't think I, but what I know for sure is I was not sad, okay? I was in a good mood. And I remember I was watching her documentary and watching her performance because to some of you, you may know that I was a secular singer. Um, I was out here chasing that world, right? And so I would always watch Beyonce because I was just, you know, I, I loved Beyonce <laughs> and I loved Rihanna. And so I was watching because I was like, Beyonce is such a good performer. And so I'm watching this song and she's singing it. I think it was I Miss You, the song where she sings like I Miss You. I don't really remember the lyrics. Thank God did that. <laughs> but I remember after watching her performance and she was performing. So it was a concert. I remember after watching the video. I felt how she felt and I felt sad like she was sad in this song like the she conveyed the emotion so well that I felt what she was feeling and I remember saying to God like I want to be able to do that like and I, I remember because I was like that's the art of music like she's such a good performer how did she just trance you know like how did she transfer that emotion right and back then I didn't know and I was so in the world so even if God told me what I know now I probably you know I probably would have been like I don't know you know I probably still would have been confused like okay I hear you God but then you know the enemy is talking and back then he had the right because I was in the world so I would have just been confused but because God actually snatched me and um took me through this process of like um cleansing 
now I'm able to see with clear eyes. And, you know, as time went by, because I even remember when she was in the Oprah interview and she was saying, like, how something comes over her. Like, I never really thought, like, oh, a demon, you know? Oh, an evil spirit. Like, I never in my life thought of that back then. Because, you guys, the devil had blinded my eyes, right? <laughs> and so I just, I did not know. And so now, as like being in the position that I am in now and being able to hear God clearly, like, and know, and the enemy doesn't have the type of access he used to, it's like I hear God clearly, and like he says, his sheep know his voice. And so I'm able to distinguish which voices of God now. And so. You know, when he had pulled me out of the school I was going to for music, he started to educate me a lot on the music industry. And I remember he was trying to teach me about this, like, years ago. And I was like, ooh, I don't want to know about this lawyer. I was like, I don't even know if I want to be a singer knowing what I know. Like, if this is true, I'm like, I don't want this life. You know, I was like, I don't want it. But then he still kept the desire in me to want to sing. And so... Time goes by, I forget about all that stuff he taught me and, you know, or showed me about the industry and I just went on to want to pursue it anyways and I went back to it and all these things, right? And so now, I, as I was like a couple years ago, I was just going to school to learn about the music industry and I remember God was trying to dig me back into what he showed me years ago. And I'm like, God, like, I don't know about this. Like, I don't know if I want to know this. Like, if you're going to tell me, like, then I need you to, like, let me know, like, you, you really want me to know this. And this isn't my own desire, just wanting to go down a rabbit hole. And so he showed me that's what he wants me to know. He wants me to pay attention. And so now, you know, um, as time was going by, he was just revealing more and more and more about music and the, the music industry. And he started to tell me, like, there are spirits attached to every song that we listen to. And he was saying, like, when I was listening to Beyonce back then, she was transferring that spirit of sadness you know transferring that like there's a spirit that is coming whether you listen to gospel music whether you listen to you know just the what they would say christian because you guys know they both have different sounds yeah they're both to god but they're both different sounds and when we come into like genres but that's not what i'm here to teach but then it's also like, you know, when you listen to hip hop music and you listen to like um, classical music or you listen to R&B music or pop or disco or EDM, like whatever it is. Every song you listen to has a spirit. And you guys, this gets do so, so deep because even the instrumental you listen to carries a spirit. And, you know, either people are getting these, you know, ideas and these um, melodies and these things from the enemy or from God. And you have to be able to discern what it is you are listening to because that is what's going into your body. That's what's going into your soul. That is what's sowing seeds and taking root. That is what's feeding you. I remember even just listening to music and God was saying to me like, listen to who you would want to talk to you. Listen to who you would want talking to you. Like if you were asking from, you know, somebody for advice, like, what would you want to hear? Who do you want to feed your mind? Because when you listen to music, you are, you know, and, and because it's music, it's easy to get, like, words stuck in your mind, especially attached to a real good melody, you know? And you find yourself sometimes just minding your own business. All of a sudden, you're, you're like, humming a song. All of a sudden, you're, like, humming a melody. All of a sudden, you're reciting these words. What are you doing? You're meditating on them day and night, and it is attaching itself to you consciously and unconsciously or subconsciously right and so it's like you are feeding yourselves and so listen to what you or who you
you will would allow to speak into your life like now from this side of the table I know I'm very cautious about who I let talk to me who I let feed me you know who I let speak into my life and that's why like with you guys I'm like you know I'm honored to be able to speak into your life because it you have to have a lot of trust to just be letting people talk into your life and to shape your world and so when it comes to music it's important to make sure like you know who you're letting speak to you because music and the artists that you listen to shape your world like if you're depressed you shouldn't want to go listen to a depressed song because all the, the artist is doing is releasing the spirit of depression into your life when people are like and then what happens like when you're you know you're listening to these things now you the words you speak go with what you've listened to and now it, you know because god has given us power and dominion right what we speak create our world <sighs> like god really like when he snatched me out of the world he had to come for me like he had to start picking everything out of me that was not like him and he had to like literally take me through processes and processes and processes of stripping just so that I could become new again and know him for who he is. And so I say all this to say, pay attention to who it is that you are letting shape your world, who you are letting speak into your lives. Because whatever you're singing, whatever you are listening to, you are becoming. And through your life, you are glorifying either God or you're glorifying Satan. So make sure... That you know who it is that you serve. Because whatever decision you make, you know, consciously or unconsciously or like knowingly or unknowingly, you're glorifying a kingdom. It's either God's or it's Satan. It's not both. Because God says you have to pick a side. And if it's not fully him, then it's lukewarm. And if it's lukewarm, then it's Satan's kingdom that you're representing. Jesus says if you're not gathering, you're scattering. Alright, that's all I want to speak to you guys about today. Just now. <laughs> For now. So you guys have a beautiful and blessed day. Talk soon. Bye, you guys.